Today, I am joined by Jean Dowers from Confluence Volleyball Club. Jean joins us to share strategies to get your team serving tough. There are a couple of things that are true in serving. The team that serves the most wins, and that's been fundamental to volleyball all the way through its history. Um, there aren't any exceptions to that unless your opponent has a really great talent for getting red cards. And so we have to be able to serve again and again as many times as we can. The second point is one that's not everybody agrees with all the time. The team's best server is the player that serves the most. Uh, oftentimes we talk about aces, we talk about percentage, we talk about, you know, who's got that wicked uh, jump floater or that really sick jump, that sick jump spin serve. Um, those are all very important. That player though is not our team's best server unless they also serve the most. Key factors in serving, and this is the things that were taught to me, you know, when I was first started in volleyball, location as the very first priority, and that is the key to what we're going to be talking about today, uh, location of serves in terms of generating geometry. Movement of the serve, um, obviously floats or spin serve, both of them are very effective in what we're going to talk about today, and then we talk about uh, velocity, and for me, velocity is ideal velocity. Obviously, if we've got a great spin serve, we can hit it really, really hard. Um, if we don't have that spin, if we have, uh, what we, you know, if we're hitting a floater, we can't hit it as hard. It's just going to go out. Obviously, also, if we're going to serve short, there's an ideal velocity for that. The combination that I see a lot, particularly in high school volleyball and junior volleyball, is one that's where the last two are not really highly developed and we get what I call the slow roller. It's a medium speed serve that's spinning just enough so that it doesn't float, but not enough so that it curves. And that's one that I like to get rid of in the teams that I work with. Um, but actually it's one of those that's real common. And uh, the ironic thing is that it's one that's really well suited for what we're gonna talk about today. So. If you've got all those good things, that's great. It'll work. If you don't quite have that yet, I think this will work for you as well. Geometry of ser serving, as I said, focuses on location. But first of all, we're going to talk about why do we serve? And there's lots of different ways that folks approach this. The very basic one is just get it in. And we see this at the level of the least experienced players that we work with. I think it lingers a little too long in our development of servers. Uh, basically, as soon as a, a, a player starts to hit the ball over the net, I start to ask them to think about where it's going to land. Um, the coaches that stick with just get it in are very interested in serving percentage. They like to have it up there about 100 percent, and uh, they're just very happy to have that player get the play started. To my mind, unless you're talking about the least experienced levels, just get it in, won't win. There's also the football, what I call the football kickoff. In our culture of sport, we are kind of hardwired to take turns. Um, and the football kickoff is a good example. We just scored and now we're gonna give you an opportunity. And that opportunity is gonna be a little bit challenging and we're gonna defend like crazy, but basically what we're doing with our serve in this situation is getting the rally going and seeing what our opponent has got to, to offer. Um, like I say, it's kind of hardware. It's, it's football, it's basketball, it's soccer. You know, we just scored now, it's your turn. The other sports that we deal with are guaranteed taking turns. Baseball has innings, softball has innings, you know, in, in tennis and in table tennis, we alternate. Um, volleyball doesn't guarantee that, doesn't require that. In the very first rules that William G. Morgan put together, it did. And we played volleyball in innings, just like baseball, but we got rid of that a long time ago. Um, about the time we probably got rid of the assisted serve for, way, for ladies. But we don't have to take turns anymore um, and we can serve them all. And that's the way that I approach serving is I want to serve them all because the more that I serve, the better my chances of winning. The next uh, at the other end of the spectrum is go for the ace. And this is the, you know, it's grip it and rip it. It's uh, just give them the toughest thing that you can possibly put out, put out there and see what they can do with it. There's a different mentality here where just get it in and the football kickoff coaches will will think very, very highly of percentage. They'll want that percentage to be as, as close to 100% as possible. There is an acceptable level of errors for those that are going for the ace. And coaches will establish their level of, of acceptable errors to make sure that the players don't cross the line from being aggressive to being reckless. Um, it's not very 
hard to find a player that's going for it, either with their serves or with their kills, and making some very impressive points, but also making enough errors so that at the end of the day, they've probably scored as many points for their opponent as any of the opponents have for themselves. And we don't want our players to be the other team's leading scorer. What I'm going to focus on today is tough. And that's a combination of things. It's presenting the most difficult ball that we can and still make sure that we're not making a lot of errors. So we'll progress from that. What is tough? Really quickly, create chaos, okay? I'm gonna go through these real fast. It's the same idea. It is get the other team out of system. Aces will happen doing this, but you'll also get lots and lots of opportunities to score points in the other options that serving provides. And that's the forced error, the unforced error, and, and getting the ball back as an easy return that can be turned into a kill in transition. Put a little bit more eloquently, the only reason that we send the ball across the net is to score a point. And this was said to me on the very first day of my very first coaching class back in Washington State University by Dr. James Coleman, who just happened to be there for a couple of years coaching the women's team. If you don't know who Dr. James Coleman is, you really need to check it out. He's one of the one of the huge figures in volleyball all the way around the world. And I was really blessed to have him there at that time. This is the first thing he put up on the blackboard. Yes, blackboard with chalk, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, this is the first thing that he said to us. I wrote it down, I've still got that note. It took me a while to realize what it all actually meant, but it became the tipping point in my team's becoming above average to being pretty, pretty good. Here's an example of a tough server. Everybody knows this example, Clay Stanley. In the 2010 World Championships, he was voted the best server. Here's his numbers coming up for that one. 155 serves, 36 errors, 24 aces. And the coaches at the World Championships selected him as the best server. There's some interesting sidebars to this. Why was he the best? Our men's team finished sixth in that World Championships. They didn't play in the semis. They didn't play in the final. But even though he played fewer matches than than a lot of other guys, he still served 26 more times than the guy in second place. So that's what, he took control of a lot of rallies. He served 77% in. And for the folks that are just getting in or the football kickoff kind of coaches, this is going to be just a terrible number. Um, his coaches had an acceptable level of error. And the coaches who were voting for him also had that same acceptable level of error. And they, this wasn't that bad in their minds because he accomplished a whole lot of other things. Here's another one. Even though he served 50% more errors than ACES. Now, my mentor, Dr. Jim, always says we need to serve 90% in with twice as many ACES as errors. So the first time I saw this, I said, oh, man, his ACES and errors aren't working out well. But the more I listened to other coaches, and particularly the best college coaches in our country, I saw that the acceptable level of error was very different. And there's a lot of people that said, okay, I'm okay with one ace for every two errors, or one ace for even every three errors, because passing is so different at that level than it is at the high school level or the junior level. Uh, so it's there's a whole variety of, of levels of play here. The bottom line is, Clay Stanley served the most and when we think about a serve as relating to a point that's been earned by our team, the more times we serve represents more points earned. And so that's one of the things that goes into what coaches now talk about is as points in rotation for points per rotation. And of course, Clay Stanley had the most points per rotation of anybody on that team and probably anybody in that tournament really. And so whatever it took, to make those points happen got started when he served. And that's one of the things I wanna work on today is to take this idea that we can, in some ways, determine the outcome of our points by what we do with our serve. How do we serve to win the rally and to serve aggressively? How does geometry help us serve tough? Work in those angles. Here's some key ideas. We're looking at the angles of of our, the ball flight from above. This is a top view of the court. We're not interested in the angles of 
of elevation of the ball. Not interested in how high it goes, not interested in, in how much arc there is. We're looking at it just strictly from above. And we're focusing on the angles that are generated by the serve. The flight of the serve is the first one, and that is from the server to the passer, wherever that goes, and then the flight of the pass from the passer toward its target. First, what we should avoid. We should avoid small angles. Now, when I'm talking about this angle, it's the angle between the flight of the path, the flight of the serve, and the flight of the pass. If those two angle, if those two flights generate a small angle, this is usually not a good thing. This is an easy pass, and this is one of the things we talk about in our introduction. Which is, you know, we're going to identify some of the things that we should we should avoid. What it constitutes a bad serve. Serving over the center. And this is something that most folks don't talk about. You know, servers, setters have a spot at the front line uh, where they normally try to do their, their setting. For most folks, if you use nine zones across the net, it's in zone six, just to the just to the right of the middle. If your servers are serving over that spot, it pretty much guarantees that the passer is going to get behind the ball and pass it right back at the server. And if they take a little bit off of it, it's going to land right on their setter. This is the easiest pass for everybody to make. It's the one that ensures what coaches like for technique. They're going to get their belly button behind the ball. They're going to get squared up and everything's just going to head in the same direction. It's easiest for the passers because the passer can see the flight of the ball, but they can also see their setter in their peripheral vision. So it's much, much easier to aim these than it is to those where the, the passer can't see the setter as well. These are the easiest ones, and this is the ones that we want to avoid. If we're serving from the right the right end of the service line and we go over the setter to the to the far passer, it'll just come right back to the setter again. This is not this is not hard. If we're serving from the middle of the service line and just blast it right straight across, that passer is looking right at their setter as they see in the ball come at them too. And this is again, this is pretty this is pretty easy. In the high school and the junior tournaments that I've been watching most recently, this is a really, really common serve. And it's a really, really easy one to pass. The next one is when we're serving from the left end of the service line and we're going across the court. In my time as a setter, this is the one that I like the best. I loved servers to serve this serve because normally my primary hitter, my left front, was the passer at the end of that, at the end of that serve. And if they kept the pass down, to a kind of a medium height, I was tracking the flight of the ball and in my peripheral vision was tracking the transition of the hitter outside. And it was really, really easy for me as a setter to send a ball out there on pace and on tempo to, to that hitter. And they, we could actually get a little bit ahead of the normal progression of speed and go quicker because I could see what was going on all the way out to the pin. So these, these are three that I, I think we should we should pay attention to and see if we can avoid. Here's a point to ponder. There's no, I don't believe that there's any tactical advantage from serving from the middle of the service line. And when we got into our phase of kind of serving real big jump serves, we tended to move folks to the middle of the serve, where folks kind of to, to gravitate to the middle of the service line um, and just blast away. As you can see in my little diagram here, all of these angles are small. And these are angles that we should probably try to avoid. There isn't any opportunity serving from the middle of the service line to generate any sort of a big angle. All of the, like I say, all of the service angles are, are, are small. The advantage is in a bigger margin for error. And there is an advantage, but that's not a tactical advantage. That's compensation for a little bit of a lack of accuracy. So how do we get the big angles? Three easy steps. Go to the end of the service line, either end of the service line, into the corner, as far from their setter as possible. So if their setter is in their right front, we're going to go to the right end of our service line and be as far away from as we can and serve down the line. Most people can do a pretty decent job of just serving right straight ahead. Even those kids that are hitting the slow roller, this is actually a very predictable serve in its path, and that's why it's easy to pass. It's not going to curve. It's not going to move. And it's, it's a pretty good one that where you can just kind of line up on the lines and go down the line. Let's see what this looks like. First, on, on, from left to right, we're going to move as far away from the center as possible. We're going to serve down the line. And then the last, in the last little diagram there, you see that the angle between the flight of the serve and the flight of the pass is going to be big. 
And as the more that we can do that, the more effective we're going to be as servers. So what does it do? It demands greater platform angulation. It's really tough for a passer to get their belly button behind the ball and turn their platform far enough to get the ball to make that big angle. And a lot of people, a lot of kids particularly, will just rotate their wrists and disrupt the flatness of their platform. It's an easier pass actually to make a little bit off center where you can get a little bit more of a drop to the inside shoulder and keep the platform a little bit flatter and get it turned enough so that it heads over toward the center. It demands a longer pass. The longer you have to pass, the greater the opportunity to miss, to make an error. You may pass across the net, may pass too far, too far to the side. All of these things get more difficult the longer you make the pass and the greater you make that platform angulation. It also increases pressure on the setter. They have to probably chase these a little bit more than the other ones. Uh, where the passer can see the setter, they're going to land the ball on that setter a little bit more often than this situation, where oftentimes, if you move far enough away, the passer's not going to be able to see the setter at all. This not, they're going to be out of their peripheral vision, and they're going to be relying on their court sense. And court sense is very, very strong in most people, but it's still not as good as being able to see what you're doing. So how do we make it even tougher? And there's easy ways to do this. And you don't have to be a super server to do it. Number one, serve the seam between the passer and the sideline. Oh, there are a number of, well, there's a lot of folks that talk about the seams in volleyball. And really, they only talk about two seams. And that is the seams between the two, the three players of the try line. I think there's a lot of seams in volleyball. And one of them that is underused is the one between the passer and the sideline. If you can get into this seam, it requires that either the passer move away from the setter to get to the ball and get themselves squared up on the ball, or they have to reach outside themselves with their arms. In both situations, they're actually turning away from the setter. And so in both situations, they're having to rely more than even before on their court sense. And the visual part of it, the visual aid to passing is uh, even, even worse. We can make it even worse if you serve past them, serve over their shoulder so that they actually have to turn and chase it, or they have to take it up with their hands if they can if they can get to it. This doesn't take a lot of power. This doesn't take a lot of curve, anything. You can just loop a ball over their, over their head into the corner, and this becomes a really, really difficult pass because now it's really a long way away from the setter, and they can't see where they're pa passing at all. The other one is serve short. Now, where you, in, the, in the last diagram where you saw about a 45 degree angle, uh, from the serve going down the line to the passer, if you bring that serve closer to the net, it comes closer and closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees, which is a tough pass to make. And again, you're not seeing what you're able to, what you're shooting for, and it's harder to get it. And then, of course, if we can add more movement and add more velocity to what we're doing, it gets even better. So tough servers, people that have it, to, you know, have more skill and more experience, if they can put more float on it and keep it in, if they can put more spin on it and curve them in, if they can hit them harder so that they get to the passer even faster, it all gets even tougher than that. Of course, it works the same when the setter starts on the other side of the court. If the setter starting in zone four or zone five in, in that part of the rotation, you just simply move away from the setter in the other direction. Now, this is where this hangs up for some folks because some folks let their kids, let their players decide where they want to serve from. And they let them stay where they're most comfortable. I don't think we need to do that. I think we can set the bar a little bit higher. We can have some very distinct tactical advantages by serving from different places on the serving line. And when a server can change from one corner to the other corner and still hit the same serve, exactly the same serve, just hitting down the line, it generates a whole lot of different angles and a whole lot of different looks. The passers have to orientate, orient themselves very differently relative to their setter. And so it changes things in a very big way. And this is probably one of the things that you don't get most in serving from the middle of the service line. The passers don't have to change their orientation relative to their setter at all. But if you're changing corners, you always do. Now what happens when the server starts in zone three? 
or is coming out of the back row from zone six and it's just push their push the hitter up to the net again if you can take if you can move over to the left side of the service line and serve down the line the pass stays behind the setter almost every setter is taught to face the left end of their net the left end of the, the left side of their court so this ball is going to be coming over their shoulder and because of that they are not going to be able to visually track their primary hitters if you do it well enough they can't even track their middle but they're certainly not going to track their left outside okay <clears throat> excuse me what do we want to take away from this we want to serve again the team that serves the most will win and we want to serve again and we want to serve again so what we want to do is serve so that we have the greatest opportunity to serve again not just to start the rally not just to get it in but to make sure that we have another opportunity to serve use a location that's tough on the passer and if you use the geometry that we're talking about it becomes it becomes a location that is also tough on the setters they're chasing a lot of balls they're chasing a lot of long hard angle passes create a little chaos see if you can get them out of system probably the thing that we will win the most points on is not aces of course although we will get some but it's that easy ball that comes back that we can turn into a kill in transition and the more we can generate that defendable ball maybe not easy but at least defendable ball coming back from their their side out opportunity the better off we're going to be serve some geometry at them think about those angles and it, it's a fairly simple idea that has been used really really well by several teams that i've worked with is just get as far away from the setter as you can push the ball down the line and let the angles help you out the great thing about this is any server can do it every server can be tough and the tough ones can even get tougher by applying a little bit of this of these concepts if they're not doing it already but you don't have to be a hugely powerful server you don't have to have you know that that wicked spin server that really sick floater you don't have to have those you can you know every server can do this and as soon as we get kids the players that are starting to put the ball across the net i think we need to start thinking about this